Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Hello and welcome to the National Press Theatre. I'm Elizabeth Thompson with iPolitics. Bonjour et bienvenue au Théâtre National de la Presse. Je m'appelle Elizabeth Thompson avec uh, le, le Media iPolitics. Uh, today we have with us uh, Health Minister Leona Glukak, uh, Mr. Jordan Banks, Managing Director for Facebook Canada, and Ellen Campbell, a dung double lung transplant recipient, uh, to launch a new Facebook organ donation initiative in Canada. Bonjour, avec nous aujourd'hui, on a le ministre de Santé, uh, Madame Glukak, uh, avec Mr. Jordan Banks uh, de Facebook Canada et Ellen Campbell, qui a reçu un transplant double de poumon. Uh, Uh, puis ils vont lancer un nouveau initiative Facebook pour la donation des organes. Uh, the, the, everyone will make statements, will be followed by questions. I will be directing the questions. And if you can please turn off your cell phones. Minister. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to uh, begin by thanking uh, everyone for joining us this afternoon. Uh, as Canada's uh, Minister of Health, I'm always encouraged when people and organizations come together to make a real difference uh, in the health of Canadians. I'm pleased to introduce to you today Jordan Banks, Managing Director of Facebook Canada, who has exciting news about how his organization is providing an important public health uh, service to Canadians. With that, Jordan, would you like to uh, Sure. Up? Thank yeah. you, Minister. And, and good afternoon and thank you to everybody who's with us here today. Uh, I am thrilled to be here on Parliament Hill with uh, Minister Agluka, uh, with Alain, to announce the availability of the Facebook uh, organ donation tool in Canada. As many of you know, Facebook is fundamentally about connecting and about sharing. On any given day, more than a half a billion people around the world share billions of stories, pieces of content, photographs, updates, and the like. And what's been most amazing to us over the course of the last eight years at Facebook is how people around the world continue to use these tools and services and these social dynamics to deal with issues that are very profound and pressing in their own communities. Today, there are millions of people around the world who are waiting for heart, kidney, or lung transplants that will save their lives. Sadly, many of these people will die waiting because there simply aren't enough organ donors to meet the, meet the need and meet the demand. Medical experts believe that broader awareness about organ donation could go a long way towards solving this crisis. And we believe that simply by telling people that you care about, that you are in fact a donor, this power of sharing and this power of connection can play an important role in raising awareness of organ donation and encouraging others as well to become organ donors. The Facebook tool is really quite straightforward. It simply allows people on Facebook to share on their timeline, the fact that they are now organ donors and to share that information with their family and with their friends. In May, we announced this tool in the US and in the UK. And since then, we've announced it in several other countries as well. And the donor registries in these countries have seen significant increases in registrations since the launch of the tool. Put simply, more organ donors means more lives saved. And so we are thrilled to be bringing this tool to Canada and to Canadians so they can now state their intention to become an organ donor and share their story about when, why, and where they have decided to do so. So let me take a few quick moments to show you how this tool actually works. So you can see here, I have signed into Facebook and I have navigated the way to my timeline. On the composer, you'll see in the upper right corner, there is something called life event. If you click on life event, 
it provides a drop down. And if you go to health and wellness and click on that, you have the ability to click on organ donor. So I click on organ donor. I have the ability, if I so choose, to identify where I am, the fact that it's 2012, and I have the opportunity to write a story or a message that all of my connections on Facebook will be able to see. So what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say 4,500 people in Canada waiting for an organ transplant. Regist registering is the least I can do. So once that is done, I have the ability to determine who I want to share it with, the public at large, or different subsets of my connections. And as soon as I press save, that registration now appears on my timeline and appears in the news feed of the people that I determine I want to share that with. And so the bottom line for us is that the organ crisis is a solvable problem, which can be dramatically impacted by more people taking the time to state their intention to be organ donors and to share that intention with their family and their friends. And that is why we're so excited to be here today. So thank you very much for your time. Thank Minister. you. Thank you, Jordan, and thank you for um, sharing that and dem doing your demonstration. I appreciate that Facebook uh, is using its extensive network uh, to highlight uh, the importance of organ and tissue donation in Canada. Uh, as Jordan just mentioned, Canada is now one of the many countries around the world that will have this feature on Facebook to share and raise awareness about organ donation in Canada. This new tool will play an important role in not only awareness and education, but also encouraging others uh, to become a registered organ donor. Uh, as mentioned uh, by uh, Jordan, uh, in Canada alone, we have uh, more than 4,500 people are waiting for hearts, livers, uh, kidney, and other vital organs. Um, despite our efforts, though the number of people who register become organ donors does not um, meet the needs. I invite all Canadians on Facebook to take a moment uh, to consider becoming a donor and to make a decision that can save up to eight lives. Just last <coughs> spring uh, in Ottawa, Ottawa's own Helen Campbell received uh, a double lung transplant uh, and Helen knows firsthand the power of social media she worked tirelessly to raise awareness about organ donation and inspired many Canadians across the country to give the gift of life. At a welcome home event in July, I had the pleasure of spending time with Helen and her family and was very moved by her story. I was pleased to be able to announce our government's investment in a national transplant research program to increase organ donation and to help those who have received transplant. Thanks to, the incredible, in, to this incredible person, uh, Helen, more people are starting to see the human face of organ donation. It is my great pleasure to invite Helen to share a few remarks at this time. Helen. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Gukuk and Jordan. Thank you. Thank you to everyone here. Uh, thank you for your time. Good afternoon. The rain is a little awful, but <laughs> we're glad we're inside and cozy. I just wanted to let you all know how how much this movement to be uh, an organ donor on Facebook and to just be aware, to let everyone know what's going on is so important because the most important thing when it comes to organ donation is sharing. And that's what Facebook is all about. It's about sharing. It's about letting others know what's going on in your life and what's important to you. And with this organ donation registry online, that is the perfect platform for families, friends, 
anyone you care about really to let others know that this is the decision they've made and it can be private and it can be public and that's wonderful and coming from someone who has received this gift and wants an increase in organ donation and transplantation itself to go up I'm so thrilled that we are able to announce this today and it gives hope to families like I mine and people like I who have had to been put on the waiting list there are people in the future who will have to be on the waiting list it gives hope and settles the fear of maybe I won't get an organ because it is something that we struggle with as being transplant as waiting on the transplant list and like Minister Glukak said one donor can save up to eight lives and increase the quality of life of 75 others and there's so many so many scary things that people are afraid of when it comes to organ donation and just the fact that it'll be on Facebook we're hoping people will do more research about organ donation and that their fears will be at ease through this and that it's something we won't be afraid to talk about it's something that will just be an issue that is not an issue something that we won't fear so I'm just so thrilled and I'm so blessed to that to be here today and share this with you because a donor family uh, took the time in a time of grief and chose to donate their loved ones organs and I'm so thankful for that gift today and there's so many others waiting and it broke my heart when my friend passed away because she didn't receive the proper organ she needed so something like this is exactly what we need and to use social media for that like I said that platform is amazing and this is our generation now generation of my youth is so social media, why not use it for the better and the greater good? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank awesome. you. Uh, Thank you, Helen. Time for questions. Uh, we also have tele a teleconference component, uh, but we'll do questions in the room first. Uh, Gloria Galloway, Globe and Mail. Um, Helen, do you ever think about the person who, whose lungs uh, you now have, and uh, do you ever contemplate, you know, say thank you to them or wonder who they are or that kind of thing? Every day. <laughs> it's something I will never ever forget and it's it's easy for us to get caught up in the world that's so busy and going on but I often when I take my anti-rejection meds stop and think of this family and the loved one who passed away and lives through me and breathes through me and I'm just so blessed to have that so it's it is something I think about quite regularly and so thankful to that family for giving me life again. Um, what do you think when you when you go online and, and see the videos of people doing the Helen Campbell dance and, <laughs> and, 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 and the, you know, the world, or the, the, at least the Canada-wide sort of outpouring that's happened after this? What do you think when you see that? I think we live in a wonderful world where people are willing to act on something like this, a selfless act that can help save others' lives. And I'm just so blessed to be supported by this amazing support and it's such an incredible inspiration to me and it shows me how much we are loved by, I, I have a faith in values, I mean I value faith and uh, I believe that there's a, there's a God taking care of us and I really, it really shines through in this whole situation how just everyone has jumped on board and there's been such amazing support from 161 countries actually so that is, that is much bigger than I will ever be able to say it's not about me, really this cause is, is is big and it's just wonderful. I don't know if I answered your question or not. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to a little while. Cormac McSweeney, Rogers. Helen, can you give us, um, I guess, an update on your condition? Do you still struggle since the operation sometimes? Uh, or on a positive note, have you been able to do some things that uh, you didn't think you may be able to do again? I've absolutely been able to achieve, do things I was not able to do before. I, going to the gym, biking, stuff like that, that's a big achievement on my part. My mom loves that I can clean again. <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, Health-wise with the transplant, they really, really let you know that it is not a cure. It is something that is a, it's a treatment. So taking meds for the rest of my life with side effects due to the medication and just blood work, changing in blood work. That's mm -hmm. something like my hemoglobin is quite low just because of the medications. That's something they can fix and they're monitoring. As far as rejection and infection are concerned, I've not had one since being in the ICU. Knock on wood, we'll keep it that way. But it's been very, very good to me. And just even that I can breathe, like I blew a balloon the other day so that's something I hadn't done in quite some time so it's really been remarkable and uh, I'm just so happy that there are others 
like me out there who are able to receive this gift. Uh, Minister, uh, can you tell us what the organ donation deficit is in Canada? I know you mentioned there's more than 450,000 people on the waiting list. Mm -hmm. How many organ donors do we have in Canada and uh, what is it right now in terms of um, those who are on the list and those who are in need? Well, in terms of the numbers of people that are organ, donation, uh, organ donors, uh, of course, we want to increase that. Uh, and we have 13 different jurisdictions that deliver health care, so each of those 13 jurisdictions have a data of uh, organ donors. But what we want to do is raise the awareness so that the information is available across the country. The investment that we made uh, in the summer, uh, in July, with Helen and I, that is to invest research in terms of how we can improve that. Uh, system and certainly Facebook and um, the work that they're doing to raise awareness and getting Canadians to be donors is an important piece of that. Um, we were having a conversation just out before the announcement. There's also um, the other um, uh, bone marrow transplant or donors that are separate from this. So how do we look at combining um, this whole registry across the country? So, um, you know, the research is important to that and we're doing the research part, but certainly partners from the private sector is very important as well uh, to raise the awareness and number of donors at the same time to try and deal with um, the increasing number of people who are waiting. Um, so I encourage Canadians to read about it, to register through Facebook or talk to others that have had uh, organ donations and, and make their decisions for themselves. Sorry, do, do you just have a, a number though of how many organ donors there are across the country? In terms of the individuals that have had have, have donated their organs, I don't have that or number. Just people who have registered. Who have signed up, I don't yeah. have that data with me, sorry. Okay. Robert Sibley, Ottawa Citizen. Uh, Minister, uh, in relating to your uh, need for research to help encourage people with donors, has the government, or would you give any consideration to the government uh, offering, in a sense, tax breaks or tax credits to the deceased's estate or the, fa the family of the deceased of those who do uh, offer donor, uh, donors? Would that be a way to encourage people to offer donors? Uh, Certainly, that the issue about taxation is not one that we've had um, a conversation about, but really in terms of how do you raise awareness, and um, I think Helen touched on it in that, you know, um, the importance of uh, donating your organs or making that decision for end of life. Um, is an important part and a hurdle that we have to get past uh, in, 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 in the country. Tax credits or tax breaks uh, would encourage people to think more in these terms. I can't say that's the issue, whether that will or not, but certainly, I mean, that's a question you raise. We can look into that, but um, my, my, my approach to it be that it's the right thing to do as Canadians to help other individuals. Um, and, you know, at the end of life care, you need to think about how do you want um, this issue handled. And in our hospitals across the country, I really believe that as we go uh, through this process of raising awareness that this will become part of the normal process of um, services that we provide to Canadians, but it's really about getting the information and the right information to Canadians first and foremost, and what it means to individuals that are uh, on the waiting list as described by uh, Helen. Thank you. Joe LaFaro, uh, Metro News. Um, I have two questions, one for Jordan, one for Helen. Uh, Jordan, why wasn't uh, the service launched in Canada back in May? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, when we launched it originally in May, Canada was always uh, on the radar screen. We have, as the minister alluded to, 13 jurisdictional um, considerations in Canada. It's not a federal registry. And so the logistics of just making sure all of the I's were dotted and T's were crossed took us until September to launch it. But from the very beginning, Canada was absolutely a consideration. And do you plan on launching in other countries in the future? We do. Today we're focused on Canada and Belgium and we're going to go to Mexico and Norway today and, and uh, you know, based on the, the great success we've seen so far since it, we launched in, in uh, May, we've had over a quarter of a million people register and, and declare their intention on Facebook and so that type of success will certainly translate well into other countries. Okay, I'm going to go to the phones and before coming back for a couple more questions here, is there anyone on the line waiting to ask a question? Thank you. Please press star one if you have a question. First question is from Lisa Marie Fleur from Journal Atelier. La première question is de Lisa Marie Fleur of Journal Atelier. Avez-vous la parole? You are now on the Please go ahead. 
Uh, this was launched in Maine, the U.S., as you said before. How many users on Facebook have uh, identified themselves as the organ donor? We've had over a uh, quarter of a million to date. In the U.S.? Okay. In the U.S. Just that, would be a, that would be a number associated with all the countries we've launched in. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Merci. There are no further questions registered at this time. Okay. Robert Sibley, Ottawa Sis. Question for Mr. Banks. Um, another dark question, if you would. As I'm sure you're aware, there are reports around the world of people being attacked or uh, kidnapped, if you will, and uh, they're being stripped of organs, mm -hmm. effectively murdered and their organs taken away. Is there a danger in Facebook offering a site where people register, give their identification, their address, their location, uh, and around the world, in very in any anywhere in the world? Is there a danger that this registration might be used against them? Might, as, did Facebook ever consider that? Yeah. So one of the things that that we focused on when launching the registry, one is clearly a, you know a, a focus on the posthumous nature of of the registry. The second would be allowing whoever registers to determine who is going to see that registration. So who is going to see that declaration of intent? Um, and it can be as broad as anybody in the public, and it can be as narrow as just my very close friends and family. And so we think that by giving people that type of control over who sees it, um, it prevents the type of situation that you outlined. Um, and as you know, it's, it's illegal in many jurisdictions, including Canada, to be engaging in anything like that. And, mm -hmm. and so um, we don't expect it to be an issue. And, and let me, if I understand you rightly, you're allowing, you're saying people can take responsibility for themselves, how much information they want to give out mm -hmm. about their location, their position, their health status, whatever, whatever it may be. Right, that's exactly right. And so with all, anything that you post on Facebook, whether it be your intention to register for the, the donor registry or anything else, you have complete control over who sees it and when they see it. Mm -hmm. And so just like this will be uh, up to the discretion of the registrant, um, you can make it as broad or as narrow as you'd like. Mm -hmm. Larry Galloway, Globe and Mail. Uh, Helen, has this now become the, sort of the main focus of your life, or are you getting back to doing things that you used to do before you got sick? I'm multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> it, is a, it is a cause that is literally and figuratively near and dear to my heart mm -hmm. and has saved my life. And there are so many others like me waiting with a story. And there is someone else who will come up with a story about kidneys or liver someday to encourage others to register, I'm sure. And this is something that I have been doing. And it is a cause that I love to advocate for. And I'm still going back to life and doing normal, regular things. So. And if you could, out of this whole weird journey of the past year, if you could pick out one moment that was the most ma amazing for you, the most sort of, I mean, heart yeah, inspiring moment for you, was it the Ellen show? Was it the Bieber tweet? Or was it something else? There have been so many, but it was waking up after my surgery and realizing these lungs are mine and I've made it. And that, that was the moment of where reality hit me. And, I couldn't speak because I was intubated. For anyone who knows me, that's a tough thing to do. <laughs> but it was absolutely like that when I woke up, because ultimately you're put to sleep and you don't know if you'll ever wake up again. And I woke up, and that is when I realized this, this is what has happened to me. I am alive because of a gift that someone has passed on. There have been so many remarkable stories that I could speak about for hours. So that, I think, for me, Maybe the meds helped a little, but it's definitely a very, very big, big, big moment in my life of wow. And how couldn't it be your first breath, you know? So, that's it. Jill LaFaro, Metro News. Um, do you still plan on returning to the Ellen Show, and do you know when that would happen? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when, but it will happen. When my health is great, when I'm feeling good, and my medical team gives me the okay to fly down, my mother and my family will dance on Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> I give you a sneak peek. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Y a-t-il d'autres questions? Thank you very much. Oh. Oh. Can you guys do the dates? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'll leave it up to them. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thanks very much. <laughs>